Action Comics number one, written by Grant Morrison, art by Rags Morales. This is a really, really dense book, as are all things that Grant Morrison writes, so I can't really waste a lot of time talking in the front of this if I ever want to get it done. So let's just dive right into it. We open with two people making a deal that we are not privy to. One of them is named Mr. Glenn Morgan, and he seems super duper evil. Superman busts into the meeting. He lands, he takes a sniff, he calls them rats, rats with money, rats with guns, and how he is their worst nightmare as he flares up the heat vision eyes. I like the Superman, but I digress. A uh, bunch of cops show up for the deal with what I guess is now a hostage situation. Uh, Mr. Glenn Morgan is the evil dude, and they exposit how he's so rich he can buy and sell anything he wants. Um, Superman, all they know is that he's super strong and he's been around for six months. So Superman is holding Mr. Glenn Morgan over the edge of a balcony with one hand over his head, telling him that he has to make a full confession for all the crimes he committed, but he doesn't want to do that. Cops are telling him to put him down and they're threatening to shoot. Um, so Superman says like, all right. So he takes a step off the balcony, plummets down. Obviously he catches him. And he, by the way, Superman, he's early enough in his career. A, he doesn't have the stupid collared costume yet. He's wearing the t-shirt that's on the cover. And uh, B, he can't fly. He does the whole leaping over buildings in a single bound stuff, but he can't fly out right yet. So anyway, he lands, he catches the guy. He's so shaken up by the whole experience that uh, he immediately starts confessing to things like illegal labor and child safety standards and whatever. So Superman's like, Basically, just saying, like, yeah, I'm here to help out the poor and go after the rich. That's my M.O. now. I really like the Superman, but I digress. We get a whole page where it just shows off his powers. He x-rays the cop and tells him about a health problem. He catches a bullet in his hand, and then he runs off with super speed. Uh, cut to what seems to be, like, NORAD. There's a whole bunch of military people and screens and stuff, and there's Lex Luthor, and there's General Sam Lane. And they're talking about Superman. Well, Lex is talking about Superman, saying how he's a conqueror or whatever. Sam Lane is actually just talking about how Lex Luthor's way too expensive and he better deliver on catching Superman. So apparently Lex Luthor's plan is to lead him down into some slums where there are buildings scheduled to be demolished, but there are still people inside of them, so Superman has to waste time saving them, and therefore he'll be distracted and more easy to catch. Which, in fairness, kind of works. He goes to demolish a building that has a family inside. Superman stops the wrecking ball, saves the family, leads them out of the building safely. And then a tank shows up, so it kind of feels like none of that other stuff was worth it. Um, he takes the wrecking ball, destroys the first tank. Second tank shows up, gets a shot off, but then they do the whole uh, Spider-Man thing. All the people that he saved come out in f between the tank and him, and he's like, hey, you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. Uh, thus giving Superman time to leap out to safety. He grabs onto what I can only assume is one of your regular flyby zeppelins, you know, and he lands over his apartment just in time to change back into Clark Kent, you know, baggy clothes and messed up hair and whatnot. And he has a talk with his landlord. By the way, all that, half the issue. We're halfway done. So he talks to his landlord. The landlord's telling him stuff, you know, about like, oh, I'm glad you have a job. By the way, rents do. You work at that newspaper, the <coughs> whatever it is, not the Daily Planet, because he calls up Jimmy Olsen to tell him about the Glenn Morgan thing, because him and Jimmy Olsen are best friends ever since he showed up there six months ago. Jimmy Olsen, however, is on a stakeout with Lois Lane, who's tailing the enforcer of Glenn Morgan onto a train. What are they doing? Who knows? But we get a whole expository on what Clark Kent is. Jimmy Olsen's best friend, works at the rival newspaper, apparently tries to sabotage Lois Lane's stories, according to Lois Lane at least. Who knows? Then there's two pages in here that are really confusing, and I have no idea what really happens on them. All I can tell is that Clark figures out Glenn Morgan's entire plan, which involves crashing a train somehow. And it's the train that Lois and Jimmy are on, and also there's explosions on the bridge, and also um, they're the hitman, not the hitman, the enforcer's going to do something as well. Anyway, he catches the train. It does the whole crumple up thing, but you know that scene in Spider-Man 2 where he flips the webs and he catches the train and he stops at the last possible minute and saves everybody? 
It's kind of like that. Uh, he slows the train down, according to Lois Lane, but the train still hits the part in the rail where the bomb was. The bomb goes off. It derails. It goes into an office building, out through the other side, down a street for a full city block full speed, and only stops pinning Superman between the train and the Daily Planet behind him. You got a page here wrapping it up with uh, General Lane coming up to Lex Luthor, literally doing like the oh I oughta. Because, you know, his daughter's on the train, and also millions of innocents could have died, but the, his daughter was on the train. And Lex Luthor's like, hey, you wanted Superman? I got you Superman. What do you want from me? And that's how we end with Superman seemingly being captured by the military because he got hit by a big bullet train. I like this issue. I like this issue a lot. But Grant Morrison's writing is so dense that this thing needed to be like two, maybe three issues by any other writer. I really like the new status quo for Superman. Not that he works for other newspapers and all that crap, and I don't care about his landlord lady. What I care about is the fact that he's going to be fighting for the poor, like equality, you know? It's not just, oh, there's an alien and everyone is saved because Superman. No, it's it's equality. He's going, he, he literally says, a uh, full quote in one of these panels here, uh, someone who still believes the law works the same for rich and poor alike because that ain't Superman. He's talking about the guy giving confession, but like he sees that the rich get away with stuff and he's working against it. And I really like that. And I think it's a hero that only gets better with time, especially nowadays. So no, I'm all for that. Uh, art also fantastic. Everybody in here looks different. You can tell who is who. Nobody's blending into each other. Um, they don't have like same face syndrome. The only issue I have is that every once in a while, there'll be an eye line. And when I say every once in a while, I mean like every like fifth panel or so, where someone is looking dead ahead, and then their other eye is off in another zip code. It's insane. But those are just tiny little little things. I really like, um, you know, the way the colors are done, the way inks are done. And again, I know that's not all up to Rags Morales, that's the anchor and the colors, but... Just the general structure and the action as well, especially in that first sequence, very good. So overall, I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10. I like more so of what it's setting up with Superman than this issue individually. But this one, if it was literally just the first half, I probably would bump it up to like an 8.5. But because it just kept going and kept working in more, I was like, okay, let's take a break. I know it's action comics, but it doesn't have to be... It, like breath I don't have to have trouble reading it in one breath you know what I'm saying like ah it's just it's got me all flustered anyway no 7.5 it's good check it out as a Superman comic if you haven't read it already